Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to my channel, Angel Ross here. Today we're gonna be doing something a little bit different, something that's starting to become more popular in the barber industry, just a different, uh, a different style that's starting to become more trendy. It's the mullet. But I'm gonna put a little bit of a twist to it. We're gonna do a little bit of shear cutting. We're also gonna do some texturizing and of course some fading on the sides. So here it is guys. I hope you guys enjoy it. And uh, this is all free, free knowledge for you guys. So the only thing that I ask is if you please just share this video with a friend. Um, you know, like, like, subscribe. And as always, thank you guys. So the first thing I'm gonna do is cut the top. Um, a lot of barbers like to start by fading first and then doing the top. What I've noticed when I do that is that uh, a lot of times if I do my fade first and then I cut the top, sometimes it just doesn't blend right. As long as, um, as, long as I start with the top first, I know that exactly where I'm gonna blend into. Sometimes if I cut the sides first, there's gonna be a little bit of a weight line whenever I finish cutting the top and then I'm gonna have to go back and refade that side. So I like to start with the top just so I know where my length is, so I know exactly what I'm fading into. So first thing is wet the hair real good. We'll get started with our shears. And with this style, we're not really gonna focus too much on the back. We're gonna try to keep that length um, to give it more of that, that mullet look. And being that I'm left-handed, I like to start on the right-hand side and work my way to the left. So I'm gonna pick up right here in this front left, right-hand side. And I'm gonna begin creating my guideline. And I'm gonna work straight back. I'm gonna push over just about a quarter inch and then you're gonna see that my guy line is right there. And one of the biggest things that's gonna help you with your shear cutting is how you hold your, your shears and your comb in one hand. Um, when I was first starting learning how to use my shears, I would always practice just holding my comb and my shears in the same hand and being able to just comb that hair with both of them in your hand. Once you master that, it'll become a hundred times easier to, to do shear cuts. You just become more comfortable with that shear in your hand and the comb as well. And as you see, I just pushed over about a quarter inch again. I'm just working my way back. Same thing, just a little over to the left. And that guideline is just traveling with me. Just run through the hair a little bit and just double check, make sure it's nice and even. Make sure there's not any little hairs that might be a little longer uneven. And then we're also going to cross check it. So since we cut the hair back, now we're gonna cross check it from side to side and make sure everything's good and even. And I'm gonna be adding a lot of texture, so by the end of the style, the hair is not gonna be even at all. Cause I'm gonna add a, a lot of texture just to help style it in the end. So it doesn't have to be perfectly even. I just wanna make sure it's not too uneven noticeably. And I'm not gonna redirect the front because I kinda want this to be a little longer. But if I did want it to be nice and even, I would I would redirect that front just to give it that nice even front. But I want that bang to be a little longer for this style. So I'm gonna leave it as it is. So now we're gonna get into our fade. And the first thing I'm gonna do is set a guideline. Just so I don't go too high or stay too low with the fade, I'm gonna set a guideline and then go back to our reverse fading technique. And this style is almost like a, almost like a uh, south of France, where it's almost like that mohawk look. Only difference is this back, we don't want to touch at all. So we're really just fading in the temple, just a little higher than a temple fade. So 
I'm gonna set my guideline. I'm really just trying to protect that corner, so that way, when I go back and, and put my line work in, I wanna make sure I get that nice, sharp corner. So I'm always gonna try to protect that corner, just to give it a more detailed look. I'm gonna go ahead and set my guideline on both sides. That way I don't have to pick this clipper back up. When you're in the barber shop and you're super busy with clients, you wanna make sure that you're saving as much time as possible. It doesn't make sense to, to do one side, put the clipper down and then have to pick it back up to do the other. It's already in your hands, you might as well use it. So I try to do both sides rather than just working on one and then the other. And I'm always brushing that extra hair out of the way. Sometimes you might have little hairs that, that may get in your way and you might think that you're, you're leaving some hair behind but it's just sticking to the skin so you wanna make sure you brush it all out of the way. So now I'm starting with my wireless and this master and I got a four guard on there. I'm gonna start with a big guard, keep it open and I'm gonna begin my reverse fade technique. And as I get into this longer hair, I'm gonna make sure that I'm doing a nice C-stroke motion. That way I'm kinda of already creating a blend into that longer hair. Um, and if there is a little bit of weight, I'll go back and, and clean it up with a clipper over comb technique that I'm gonna use in the end. But right now I'm just setting my base up to where my fade is gonna be, using a big, big guard to do so. I'm gonna close my I4 and I'm gonna work right under that. Now I'm gonna use the three guard and I'm gonna do the same thing, open, working right underneath that four closed. Now I'm gonna close it all the way. And again, working right underneath, about a quarter of an inch, a little less than a quarter of an inch. And you can already see it start to, to create that fade that we're looking for. Now we're gonna go with a two guard, again open. And now, now it gets to the point where you just start using that very corner of your blade. You don't have to use the whole blade because you're not going to be fading in a big area. We're just trying to blend this, this small little area. So we want to use as much of that corner of that blade as possible. There's going to be a more precise fade. Um, you don't have a lot of room to work with, so you want to be real careful when you're trying to use that whole blade. Close it all the way, and we're just working lower and lower. Now we're using a one guard, and again, same thing, very corner of the blade, and we're just giving it that C stroke motion that we talked about to make sure we don't leave any hard lines and have to go back and fix anything. Closing about halfway. And just fading it down. Now we're gonna use a, now we're using a purple zero open and I'm just barely touching it with this corner now I'm closing it and I'm moving down and 
You can see that line starting to fade away. And the cool thing about this technique is if you see any little shadows or any little lines you might see, you know exactly what guard that is because you worked your way down from a four to a three to a two. So I can tell you that that right there is probably about a two guard open. And I can always go back and just touch it up. With a lot of the other techniques, when you're working your way up in a fade, once you cut that hair, it's gone. You can't put it back and fix it. With this right here, since you're working your way down, you're not cutting as much hair, so sometimes if there is a little bit of weight, you can always go back and fix it. Now we can just go with our no guard and get back to where we were previously. Just knocking that line out. I'm gonna smooth it out with my T-edger before I start working on this line. And I wanna make sure I keep these lines as natural as possible so you can kinda see where the hair grows. It's showing you exactly where that line needs to be. Sometimes we try to push the line to try to make it as sharp as we can, but the hair naturally grows right there. And we're gonna add a little bit of color enhancements to this, so that'll sharpen it up even further. We're gonna clean up a little bit around the ear. And I'm just using the very corner of my blade. And with this style, I kinda want this to look natural. So I'm not gonna line it all the way down. I'm just lining the very, the very outer perimeter of his ear, just so it stays off of his ear. But I kind of like the style of the hair when it kind of lays over the neck a little bit. Same thing with the temple. You don't want to try to push it too far back. You just want to keep it as natural as possible. I'm gonna touch it over my razor. Trying to get it as close to the skin as possible. And again, I'm using the Barber Life Cloud. I'll leave the link below so you can purchase yours. Also using a Dorco Prime Blade. Works really well with dry shaving. I'll leave the link for that as well at the bottom. I mean, I can always go back and just touch up anything that I see. And like I said, normally I would have done both sides at the same time, but for the video and being able to show you guys the details and the work, um, I want to do one side at a time. So I'm going to run through this side. Then we can start adding some texture to the top once I finish fading out this side right here. Now I'm just gonna go back with my shaver and just kind of touch it up. Sometimes the shaver does get a little closer than the razor does. And I wanna be real careful that I don't leave any lines, so I'm kind of just C-stroking it a little bit, making sure I'm not going too deep into the haircut to where I'm gonna leave a hard line. So before I start adding my texture to the hair, I wanna make sure it's dry. I like to add my texture in there dry so that way I can see what I'm doing. Sometimes when the hair is wet, it looks like I'm cutting more than what I should be, or I'm not cutting enough. So when it's dry, I can see exactly what it is that I'm cutting. So now I'm gonna use a little bit of a longer shear. It's about a seven and a half inch. And I'm gonna comb the hair to the right, and I'm just gonna slice through it. Give it a little bit of texture. About a half an inch apart on each section. His hair is already a little thin, so I don't want to do too much to make it look even more thin. So I'm just going to touch up a couple sections. And I'm going to go the other way and do the same thing. And 
Now I'm not taking a lot off, just barely. Just enough to where it lays on top of each other. So now you can kind of see where that texture makes the hair fall on top of each other and create a totally different look. And that's without any product, without any style. I'm gonna go back with my comb, shears over comb and just kind of touch up a little bit of these longer hairs. All right, so now before I start styling the hair, I'm gonna add a little bit of color enhancement, just using a little Kiss Express. Um, it's probably my preferred color of choice, semi-permanent. Stains the skin real nice, and that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a background um, underneath that hair. Just to make the hair look a little thicker, I'm gonna put a background behind it using my semi-color, semi-permanent color. And I'm just gonna lightly apply it. And I'm gonna brush it in. And this is actually a Just For Men brush. Um, I bought the box color just for the brush. I really don't use Just For Men too much, but this brush is like the best brush I've ever found for color. So every now and then I'll buy a box just to get that brush out of there. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Brushing the hair out of the way. Just staining the skin underneath. All right, so for my finishing look on the top, I'm gonna use this uh, Niche Man uh, powder styling. It's just a dry powder. It's gonna give me a drier look. I'm just gonna sprinkle some of that on there and, and rub it in. I'm just gonna really dry out that hair and make it really style nice. And I'll leave a link below for this product as well. So for the back, I want to kind of stop and spike it up a little bit, just to give it a different look than a regular mullet. So I'm going to use a little bit of hairspray in my blow dryer. I'm going to start spiking it up. messy look for this style. I don't want it to be super clean or anything fancy. That's why I, that's why I use my just my hair my hair dryer and a hairspray. Just to kind of give it a more natural look. I beam just to give it a little bit of a blue touch for my photo. And I'm just gonna add just a little bit of that blue. All right, so there it is. The mullet with a little bit of blue on the back, spiked up, texture on the top, and a nice temper fade on the side. So if you guys enjoyed the video, let me know. Leave a comment below. Make sure you share it with a friend. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Peace.